welcome to Women's Accent. I'm your host, Judy Joseph. Women's Accent will bring you creative programs, exclusive interviews with top celebrities, and influential people who will inspire, educate, entertain, and challenge us. We're very excited. Our first guest is medium June Field. June was crowned the world's best medium in 2012 in the Ukraine in a very popular show, much like The X Factor. The show was watched by more than 34 million people all around the world. We called June Field by Skype from her lovely home in Dundee, Scotland. Here is the interview with June Field. June, I, I really wanted to get a sense of, of your what you do and also to talk about you as well as a person, what you love to do, your hobbies. When you're not, when you're not reading or you're not working, do you do you travel? Do you cook? Do you garden? Do you what do you do when when you're not when you're so, taking time away from all this? When I'm taking the time away and I just want to relax, I actually love to go horse riding. I just get on a horse and I go to the woods and I just I don't go riding hard as in galloping around. I go with a friend and I just saunter through the woods watching the deer and the wildlife and it actually just seems to take me away or if I can't go out because it's bad weather I will lose myself just by sitting playing some music or I will rake out a piece of Rachmaninoff or Beethoven and sit and try and play it again on the piano I don't get much time to play. What kind of music do you like? What do you, I, I, I guess classical. Who are your, from are your favourite composers? My favourite composer has to be Beethoven. Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata is my favourite of all time. I learned to play that when I was about 14 and I've never forgotten it. It's in, it's, I don't need music for that one. And I also sing as well. So I have, I have a singing CD out too. I need to say your copy. Give us a little, ta a little taste. What, a taste of singing? Yes, absolutely. Or a taste of, okay, um, okay. <laughs> Ave Maria, gracia plena, Maria gracia plena, Maria gracia plena. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. I have, I have a goosebumps. I just, that's one of my favorite pieces. So is Alleluia by Handel. I mean, those two are oh, after my, it just you. takes you somewhere else. This is so, what a fabulous person you are. I'm so glad that we're meeting. Hopefully oh, we can meet you. in person soon, as opposed to by Skype. Rachmaninoff is a fantastic composer and unfortunately I'm not able to play a lot of his stuff because he had the biggest hands uh, <laughs> that you can imagine and his chords are really difficult to get your hands round but Rachmaninoff's um, one of the most romantic composers ever. Now, there's been a lot of pop songs written with Rachmaninoff music, and one of them was All By Myself, it was called, and it was number one in the charts. All and a lot by of people. Myself. That's a lovely song. I want to be all by myself. That's actually Rachmaninoff's um, concerto number two. I did not know that. Thanks for educating me on that. Celine Dion sings that song as well. Yeah, it's a fantastic song. It is, it is. June Field has over 40 years of experience in psychic, in the psychic field, spiritual movement. June Field Medium provides evidence to individuals throughout the world that life inevitably goes on. Yes. June, you're based in the lovely, Dun lovely uh, Scotland. Tell us what is so fascinating about mediumship and I know that um, a psychic is not necessarily, a psychic is a person, is, it's different from what you do. So my question to you, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm clear on my question, I want you to explain to us what is the difference between a psychic and a medium, because I'm often confused about that and so many others as well. Well, a psychic is someone that reads an energy field and can tap into the energy field and they can read around you and they can tell your past because each energy field that we have around us contains all our records of past, present and future. 
And now that is what a psychic does, taps into that. A medium needs to be psychic because we tap into that energy as well, but we take it one step forward. And that is through that energy, we allow spirit or people that have passed to come forward. So we're taking a little step further than just being psychic. It is going into another vibration past the psychic, but allowing the ether or people from spirit to connect with us. So my job as a psychic medium is to prove life beyond death. So you're not a clairvoyant, correct? Clairvoyants are, yes, people, clairvoyancy is being able to see. Clairaudience is being able to hear. Yes. And clairsentience is being able to feel. Now, I, as a medium, I'm clairaudient, clairsentient, and um, I can, feel, hear and see all. So I'm, I'm lucky. Some people, mediums or psychics, they can just either hear or they can just feel. But I've been very lucky that I have all three and I think that's what's just made the wee bit of difference, you know. <laughs> that, that, that sets you apart from many of the others. I want to say congratulations. You are, you are crowned the best medium in the world. How do you feel about that? How exciting is that? Do you know, it was very early in the morning when <laughs> The winner was announced and when Paul pulled it out of the envelope, he was obviously the compare of the show and said that this person had taken 50% of the votes. Yeah. I was just, well, you can see it on my site because I just put my, I thought, oh my God, and that's just amazing. I was just over the moon, especially being in Ukraine and Roma was Ukrainian and the Ukrainian people supported me and I was just really touched. It was a very emotional and, touch. And of course there were other Ukrainian contestants there, correct? There was one Ukrainian um, who was in the final. There were four finalists, four of us, USA, Australia um, and Ukraine and myself from Scotland. But tell us, June, why did you want to participate in the show? Because as we said, the show was in the Ukraine and it's quite, kind of like the X Factor, if you will. You, sp you were away for like five, six months so tell us why you decided to participate in this um, fabulous event and also what it meant to you to win. Well, first of all, I got an invitation through email asking if I would take part and go through their casting process. And I actually ignored it a few times because I didn't know what it was. And then they did call me up and say, look, we are STB and we are holding this competition and it's international. And I thought, what the heck, I'll go for a week. It will see you for a week. <laughs> a week. Because that's what casting was. It was a week. Yes. I'll go there. And um, I went and they said, no, we want you on the show. We want you to participate on the show. And you couldn't and you, say no. Um, I, I thought about it and I thought, oh, six months. Six months a long time, you know? Yes. And I said, yeah, well, yeah it's an adventure. And I thought, I will treat it as an adventure. And that is exactly what I did. And it was a great adventure. I'm sure it was. Was it challenging to be away from your home in a different, in a new culture for five, six months? It was very, very hard the last two months. I've got to say that to you. The, the first couple of months, it's a novelty, but then there's the barriers with the language. I am a very fast worker. When I have communication coming in, I want to throw it out there fast. I become very animated and I had an earpiece in my ear and I was told slow down because the interpreter can't keep up with you. So I had to change that. The language barrier was one. And then there was the food. I didn't know what anything was because I couldn't read the labels and I couldn't read the menus. So that was another. And everything was just very different. I actually had an apartment there. I was the only psychic that did have an apartment. Because <laughs> you were special, right? <laughs> well, I, I subsidized it myself. Oh, I just like my space. And I was living in the center of Kiev and I got on the metro and I got on the buses and I traveled and was amongst the people. And I decided that because of I was there, I was going to overcome all my fears and everything that I could possibly see, I squeezed into my agenda. And it was an adventure, but it was difficult. The last couple of months, I was tired and I missed my home. 
I miss my family, yes. I miss the sun, my garden had gone all to pot because it had been left <laughs> all summer. It was unrecognizable. June, how old were you when you realized that you have this extraordinary gift? You must, I'm not going to ask you if you remember because I'm sure you remember, but how old were you when you realized what you had? When I realized what I had, thinking back, I was probably about four or five years old. Now, I didn't comprehend in my head how, but when I was about 12, I realized and it kicked into gear, yes, I am different. But when I was four or five, I used to see people all the time at night in my room and I thought it was totally normal. And the only thing that frightened me about it was that I didn't know who they were. What did, what did you? What was? Do you remember what, what was the, your parents' reaction and your friends at school? Because this was unique. This was a unique gift. My parents. I had a great aunt, and she was in the movement. She was a medium, a very strong medium, and it skipped a generation. Then it hit me. So my mum knew that I was different, and my father. I used to say to him at night. Dad, there's people in here when he would come and say good night, and he'd say, Just smile at them, wow. and, and they'll smile back. Were and I did. Were you frightened as a child when, when this happened? I was used to it, but it frightened me because I didn't know who they were. Wow. And when, when you're there in the middle of the night and you're waking up and someone is looking at you here, that close. <laughs> I, yes, it could be quite scary because you get a fright. What is the most challenging aspect of being a medium for you? Do you know, the most challenging aspect of being a medium for me is that you are placed in the company of the most vulnerable people. And it is such a responsibility. I do remember an example of this and a lesson I learned was that I gave a reading to a lady who had just lost her partner mm. and I gave her such specific information to prove that he was alive and well on the other side and she was so grief stricken and mm. it was early days that she said, you've proved to me that he is there, now I want to go and be with him. Wow. Wow. And think, Ugh. No, it's not your time yet. So you have to be responsible about what you do and say when people are so vulnerable. That's challenging. June, I must ask you this. You know they are critics. You know that, right? How, how do you respond to people who think it's, it's negative? Or even well, that it, it's devilish. There are people who think that. I'm sure you know. What do you say to those people? I don't tend to say very much to them. I help a lot of people and I raise an awful lot of money for charity and sometimes you, if you're in the media, some people will write some things about you that are negative and I did remember answering one of the comments to a newspaper that was in Scotland and it said, oh, you know, you're preying on people and you're doing this and I said, well, first of all, quite a lot of the time I don't take money for readings. Mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. I raise thousands of pounds for charity yes. all over the world and I uh, said, why don't you, instead of sitting at your computer answering emails or being negative, go out and help a homeless person? Yes, yes. That was my answer. Well, s since you mentioned that, I know that you're passionate about giving back to those in need. Tell us about some of your charity endeavors. Well, I've, I've raised money for many, many different charities. I'm, actually demonstrating tomorrow night for a charity and Friday night for a charity and it is a passion to me from either horses that are homeless to children that are suffering from life-threatening illnesses to any cause that someone might want to raise money for to help people I will if I can help them it that's just takes my time that's wonderful. all wonderful and that that's a great answer <laughs> that's a great answer June, we're doing this uh, interview for um, a woman, women's magazine called Women's Accent. Are women more intuitive than men? Do women make better mediums? No, I've got to say yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> of course they do. Women are better than everything. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why, Julia. I, I, I am going to tell you why. Because women are totally different from men in the sense that men can only think one thing at a time and they tend to be 
the shut off from things where women are more compassionate and caring and loving and that is a sensitive side that they have and you will find that quite a lot of men that are mediums are more in touch with that sensitive side mm -hmm. and that's what tells them apart and that's why they become good mediums but yes women are far better because they are born sensitive compassionate and caring June, what do you think about laboratory experiments for studying medium, studying medium abilities? I think that under the right conditions, that you they can. They, there's definitely a change and a shift in energy. I know that I actually have um, and have done experiments in a development class that I was teaching, and it was you know the blood pressure and um, little gadgets that you can put around your arm and you can take my blood pressure before I tune in and then when you take it when I am tuned in there is one huge difference so it, there are experiments energy changes the aura field changes in one of your challenges June you had to portray a person with your eyes tightly closed with a non-transparent mask and world famous French actress Michelle Messier who's better known for her role in Angelique was very moved by what you did. She was very aff affected emotionally. Do you want to comment on this, please? When I stood there um, with my eyes closed, I link with spirit. And so I don't need to be anywhere near her or around her. Um, I, her spirit friends and people that are close to her pull into me and they talk to me, they give me pictures and signs and so I just relayed the information to her. I don't need to see her. I wouldn't need to be able to, I could, my eyes tightly closed mean nothing. I still receive the information. I, I want to ask you if it's harder to read for people who are not, who don't believe it. Like that. They have all kinds of doubts, but they want to, to get a sense of what you do anyway. Is it hard to, to work with people yes. who are non-believers? Do you know this? A lot of people used to always send me the skeptics. They would be, you know, I'm making an appointment with you because so-and-so told me to come because I'm a skeptic. And you think, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, they are a bit difficult, but I'm like a dog with a bone in a sense that if I have a piece of information and you don't take it, I don't let it go. I will say, okay, let me sort it out and let me fix it. And inevitably, um, they usually go, oh, yes, that's right. And I say, thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, I get a lot of skeptics, but yes. they're usually not skeptical. Yes. I also want to ask you quickly if um, how difficult it is to, to give news to loved ones if they're, fam if they're not resting in peace. Do you get that as well? Like the, maybe they're troubled or there's something not quite right. Is it difficult to give that kind of news to loved ones? No, it's not difficult. I am the conduit. I'm the tool in the middle. And just because someone dies or passes over to the other side, I think people are under the misconception that they are totally happy. It's like, hello, I'm here. This is great. <laughs> Rest in peace, they've, yes. They've left their loved ones um, on this side of life. And if someone was killed in an accident or someone um, took their own life, they need closure to those here on this side. Yes. And so they don't become happy, but they're not sad. They work with other members or loved one in the spirit world to overcome their problems and negative aspects of being there. So no, they're not all happy. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that are sad and that's why they push forward to say, I'm sorry, I did this, I'm sorry, yes. or I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. June, do you think it would still be possible to scientifically prove life on the other side? Well, they're doing it all the time. They are, there's lots of things that can't be explained. You know, everyone goes on to me about this James Randi um, task that he offers a million pounds to someone if they can prove that there is life on the other side. But there's also another million pounds offered by someone else, and I can't for the life of me remember the name, but it's asking James Randi to prove that there isn't, and he'll give them a million pounds, and it can't be done. Do you practice precognition, seeing into the future? No, I don't okay. practice any of that. I do a bit of meditation, but to be honest, it just comes. It's just there. Is it possible? It's possible to see into the future. It's, if you think of me like a mobile phone. <laughs>
seriously, mm-hmm. if you think of me of a mobile phone, if I happen to be in a set area and get a good signal and pick up a great network, it just comes to you instantly. And it's as simple as that. The judge panel included famed mentalist and world-renowned spoon bender Yuri Geller. Did you get a chance to chat with him personally after the, um, the contest? I did actually speak to him on the telephones while I've been home in Scotland. He's a very nice man. I like him and I never thought that when I was 14 or 15 years old and used to watch him bending spoons, that he would be interacting and saying, oh, June feels specific, June feel did this, June feel did that. I was touched. He's a very nice man. I like him. You continue to, to sell out venues all across uh, uh, Scotland and in Europe. What's your appeal? I mean, there are a lot of other mediums. What is so special about you, if you can, if you can say that? And you're not going to sound narcissistic. It's the truth. You, there's something about you. Do you know, I am a very compassionate, caring individual. And... I am also humorous when I work and it's very energetic, I'm not boring, I can, and I also link with about five people at the same time. I will be doing a demonstration and go, I've got your dad here and he's only got one leg and he tells me that you didn't bury him with it, um, um, with his false leg, or your mother-in-law comes forward and says that you shut her budgery gar in a door and it died and I have it. I give the specifics but it's not doom and gloom. And it is quite entertaining, and that's just the way spirit worked with me. June, when you're not doing your work that you do so well, uh, we know about your compassion and the work you do with animals and the poor. What do you do when you're just sitting back, when you just want to take a break? Do you like music? Do you cook? Do you travel? Scotland's lovely. Scotland's nice, but do you know this? I'm hardly ever home because I'm... I'm always away working Mm -hmm. and so when I do get the chance to be home I shut the door and I just you know I like to sit and watch a little bit of television I'm actually totally normal (laughs) (laughs) but I am what do you you love to do what are your hobbies do you cook do you dance do you do you do you sew do you knit I've done karate for 36 years wow and I used to teach karate, and I'm a third dan in karate. And I'm, I, when I go all over the world, traveling in Canada and USA, I take my karate suit and I train. Cool. You're cool too. <laughs> I, I, I also heard that you love classical music. Tell us some of your favorite composers. And I heard you, someone said to me, you've got a beautiful voice. And if you'd be so gracious, maybe to sing a note or something for us, that'd be lovely. But I'll sing a little line of something. All right. June, how versatile are you? That's lovely. Who's your favorite composer, by the way? My favorite favorite is Beethoven, Moonlight Sonata. He's great, and I love Rachmaninoff, but I am not able to play a lot of Rachmaninoff because he had the biggest hands and they're huge <laughs> chords, and that I just can't get my wee hands round them. But he is one of the most favored composers. I don't know if you ever watched a program, and it was called um, The Pianist and he decided to do Rachmaninoff music for an exam and the examiner said, are you mad, <laughs> Rachmaninoff? Because it's very difficult music, but he did it and he, you know, he was good. Well, I love, I love Alleluia by Handel. That's my favorite. Handel, Alleluia, it's fabulous. And you play the piano as well, correct? Yes. Did you play for the Queen? <laughs> I actually sang for the Queen oh, Mother. Sang. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that was in an operatic society and it was at Glam's Castle, Tayside Operatic Society, and we did an opera there and the Queen Mother was present. Oh, that must have been lovely. Did you, you, you must have enjoyed that. 
it, it was nerve wracking. <laughs> it was nerve wracking. It's more nerve wracking than what I do now. How can um, it be nerve wracking for a medium? You know how everything's going to turn out. <laughs> Do you know this? I wish I had a pound for every time somebody said that to me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Listen, um, before we close, we wanted to ask you what message do you have for our audience? And hopefully we will see you in person in North America. Any plans to be in Canada soon? Uh, yes, I probably will. Sometime next year, I think, I will come to Canada. That's too late. We want you this year. Next oh, year is so far away. Well, maybe this year, maybe okay. later this year. We'll just need to see what happens. In, in closing, But, what would you like to say to the audience? I would like to say that if you could see things through my eyes for just a couple of minutes, it would change your whole perception of life. People don't die. And that you will see your loved ones again. Never lose hope. But remember that when you're here on this side of life, be kind to yourself as well as people because you reap what you sow in this life and never ever have to go and say to someone like myself, I need to say I'm sorry to someone I've lost. Mm. Make sure you do it now and say everything you need to say while you have the chance on this side of life. And that's what I want to say. Well, I'm sure readers are going to love a reading in, in the Women's Accent magazine about you and It was lovely to meet you, although it's via Skype. I'm hoping to see you, hopefully this year in Canada. You will. You will. I'll make a point of it. I'll come over and see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.